Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming. I'm Dell and this is From the Depths, version 1.8 we are currently up to. And this is the continuation of the tutorial videos for some of the basics of using and playing From the Depths. And in this episode, we will be looking at an area which is not used that often by people in the game but it's a fun area to look at, and that is the sailing aspect and simple weapons um, along with sailing. So you may have a campaign, a custom campaign, or want to make a ship which just uses sails and uh, possibly only has uh, simple weapons. We've got a simple hull over here uh, as an example, and if I just put my character in the ship, there we go. So we've got a nice wooden ship, which is floating, and it's got no engines, it's um, got no method of propulsion, because we know, we just say there's no oil. You have no oil, or so for some other reason, you might want to do a custom campaign, which and see how far you can just go without using engines, just using simple weapons. So we've got some small cannons, large cannons, etc. So what is available for you is sailing now the sailing components in the build menu appear whoops let me just go into build mode there we go now appear under the water area you have a whole x section on sail although it's in um, entitled here sail main block if you click into that that will give you a number of other options now the first thing to look up is you've got two types of sail. You have the square rig sail and you'll see, notice the icon has changed to show a square rig and this normal um, sort of triangular style of cutter um, sail. Uh, um, so you've got the square rigger or, or the normal, normal sail. And they both have different uh, reasons and uses in a ship. Now we're first of all going to be looking at the sail main block and we'll look at the normal type of sail. So the first part you have to place is actually a, 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 the container that holds the corner, the bottom corner of our sail. So that's what we've just placed and you can see it's already put like a mock-up of the sail. Now what we have to do is build the sail to the left and right sorry up upwards and along the base of the sail now we need to put some wooden blocks so I'm just gonna do it with um, wood at the moment uh, we'll put ten blocks one two three four five six ten so that's gonna be a ten in sail and we'll go up as well ten one now we have to go up one more and I'll show you why that is in a second now that we have this is our main mast and this is uh, there is a there is obviously a sailing term for this uh, but this is the beam um, I think or uh, try and think what it's not the stay I'm trying to remember what this is called um, in sailing terms but uh, <laughs> it's not really a, uh, an issue at this moment so what we now need to do is add on our main block is the sail attachment. Now the sail attachment has to be placed correctly. We turn it around so it is connected to the piece of uh, wood or whatever beam block you have put here and we push it up. Now you can see the sail being created. Now we're gonna not go all the way to the top and I'll show you why in a second. On the bottom we will go all the way to the end and I moved it to aim at the blocks at the bottom and you'll notice that it has now built our triangular sail connected to the two areas. And you'll also notice now that there is a few arrows now pointed on this sail. Now the two arrows, the red is actually the direction of force that this sail is now giving us. And down at the 
bottom this blue arrow is actually the direction of the wind so at the moment the direction the wind is directly due north and we're being forced along at a nice 2.6 2.7 2.9 actually are there at times so a nice speed um, and with our character in front of the wheel we can change our direction because we have a rudder at the back of the ship under the water down here there is a rudder so if I just now use the H and K so we're going if we go due north I just want to show you if we go due north so the wind would be directly behind us and you'll notice now how our speed has cut down because this sail is designed to go cross wind so it doesn't like it does give you some speed it doesn't cut to zero but it doesn't like being um, in that direction we'll now change our direction we're going to change our heading to 45 degrees. So we're going to be going about 45 degrees to the wind. So we'll just change our heading. And you'll notice the heading on the right hand side down at the bottom. About, about most of the way down on the, on the side. So it's a little far. There we go. There we go. We're at 45 degrees now. Roughly. And we've got a nice speed of 3.2, 3.3. You can see that um, where the, the wind is by this blue arrow, and you can see where the force is, but uh, the, the rudder would be trying to force us going forwards. You can see the green arrow is showing where the force is actually being applied. So it's being applied directly forward. So that's at 45 degrees. If we now go 90 degrees, so we're rolling over, slightly we haven't got an overly large sail so we haven't actually got to worry about rolling over but now we're at 90 degrees to the wind and you'll notice our speed has it's gone down a little bit um again it's going up slowly we are getting some force but it doesn't like this position you know any type of sailing ship doesn't like um going directly sideways into the wind it's unfortunately it needs some sort of angle so directly there but even if I just give it whoops wrong button bear with me there we go if I just go a few degrees off so we're going uh, so 20 degrees off you'll notice our speed immediately picks up so it doesn't like being exactly 90 but if we just get to even 10 degrees off there we go at 9 10 see it still gets a little bit more speed just doesn't like being 90 degrees to the wind so that's our our triangular sail we'll go back to a northerly uh just slightly the opposite side of north now I did leave a block at the top because at the moment we have no way of changing our speed there was one other option in here which is a sail winch now if we put the sail winch on the top here and this is important for the AI but at the moment what it means is you'll notice on the top left hand side we have a T and a G and that means I can actually change speed now by lowering the sails so we can actually change our force if we wanted to slow down come into port that type of uh, method we can change how much force our sail is applying in any particular direction the AI will also use this when we get into the sailing AI so that's our um, normal sail now I'm gonna leave this here but I'm gonna take out that corner block so the sail has disappeared so we've, we've effectively removed the sail now there is the square sail so we're just gonna put that one in so we can build a square sail uh, I think that should be big enough to put the, the sail into just to show it off okay I'm also gonna put a mirror line in here gonna be quicker to build so under again under water 
sail main block. This time we're going to select the square rig. We're going to attach it to the corner. Again, we're starting in the corner. So you can see it's created the corner. And then we're using the same sail attachment going all the way out. And again, we're going to go all the way up, but leave one at the top. So we will then add a the sail winch at the top so that we can lower the sail ourselves. I'll take off the mirror line now. Don't need it anymore. So now we have a square sail. So if we go up in speed. Now when we go to the north, let me just go straight behind the wind. There we go. So You'll notice on this, the red lines are straight into the sail. And the ones at the bottom, you can see the green line and the blue line. So with the sail straight behind us now. Um, sorry, the wind is straight directly behind us. And we're getting a good four meters a second. If we now change our direction. So we go to the 45 degrees, but with the sail wind still behind us. There we go, that's about 45 degrees. You'll notice we've still got a good speed, because we've still got that wind behind us. As such, it's not uh, great, but it, it is uh, um, uh, helping. We're still at 3.1, so it's still quite good, still effective. If we now go to 90 degrees, to the wind, as would be expected, our speed has right gone down. Actually, we're gone the opposite direction. Let me just try and get that back. Bear with me. There we go. 88. You can see our, our speed is almost zero. Almost disappeared. Now, an interesting bit here. With a square sail, if I go into the wind, you'll notice the green lines have actually started pointing backwards. Um, it will actually go in reverse and use the sails to go in reverse. So in those cases, you would actually want to bring that sail down because it's actually pushing you backwards. So knowing where the wind is is very important. So you can use this little green um, icon. Another way to know how the wind is, is there was one other, which is the weather vane. Now the weather vane points at where the wind is coming from, not the direction it is going, but where it is from. So we know the wind is due south. So if we wanted to go against the wind, there is no point in taking up that um, square sail. What we would need is the triangular square sail. So if we put this sail bl block back, there we go. And unfortunately, we are gonna have to do this just at this moment. I have to take that one off, take that one off. Um, actual fact, that's not gonna work. We will have to take out the block at the bottom because it's gonna insist on trying to sail using those ruddy sails. Even if I, if I put these ones up, then they'll work against each other. And you'll not be able to sail because we're going effectively going backwards. So it's going to be pretty difficult to try and head the opposite direction with those square sails up. This is where the AI can be greatly handy. Doing this manually, you would have to go and either set up a complex controller or um, there we go, we just got behind the wind again now. So now that we're behind the wind a little bit, we've got the, you can see the red line from our triangular sail is pushing us along quite nicely and a little bit from the square sail. And as we go further into the wind, so with the wind coming from directly behind, you'll notice that the two the red line changes. So now our square sails are providing most of the force and our triangular sail has basically gone to nothing. So this gives us a good sailing speed in two directions. But we do have a problem with trying to control which sail is going to be used um, without a manual control on this system. 
So what we're going to do is, if I'm going to bring all the speeds down, so we just go back to zero, is that we're going to look at AI control. Let the computer sort this all out for us, which cell to use at what time, and we just then just tell um, uh, the ship where to go. So what AI components will you need? Well, obviously you'll need a mainframe, and I've set up a mainframe with some connected um, parts to add the parts for the mainframe. So under AI, here in the menu, go to AI card and left and right slot, which I've already added. Now we will need a naval AI, so I put the naval AI in, and we will also then need the sailing card. So you need both cards. And I would also recommend for sailing ships to add the patrol card as well. So you've got a patrol card, sailing algorithm, and the naval AI. Right, so how do these work? Right, the sailing AI basically is to do with um, angles and rolls when uh, the sailing when sailing when the wind applies against your sails it will force the ship to roll a little bit and you want to set how much of a roll you can will allow um you know generally these figures are okay but if your ship is okay with rolling quite high you obviously don't want to roll too far because uh, your ship will roll tip over and or it may not be able to fire its guns, so there may be a limit as to how far you want to roll the ship. Uh, the other part is obviously going to be your naval AI. Now your naval AI, uh, we've been about naval um, before, about the AI with motor, but with the simple weapons we might want to reduce the range. Because these cannons don't have a very long range, so let's let's say we want to enter broadside at say 90 meters, and we want to stay around that 90 meter range. Now we want to go into broadside, a literal 90 degree broadside, but we want to sort of roughly head in, so 85 degrees, so slightly off 100% broadside, so it will be slowly closing. Closing. Uh, minimum range. We don't want to go much closer than, say, about let's say 50 meters. At 50 meters, it will tack away because um, we want our main guns to stay at range. We, you, if you wanted to make it so that you could close really close because you had a ramming um, for your ship, you could set that at zero, and it would then keep on going until you contact with the enemy. In this case, we'll keep it at 50. Um, the other ones you would want to do is disable reverse. You don't want it in any re reason to want to try to reverse backwards. So you'd want to disable that item as well. So that's all in place. So now, if we just turn on this to... Um, we'll just turn it on to fleet move. You'll notice it has brought up the sails. Because it's going to try and go over to these items across over there. And it will change the sails. You can see, because it's going into the wind, effectively. As you can see, it's decided, I don't want the square sails. I will take the square sails down. And I will um, only use, because they would make us go backwards, we'll only use this, the triangular sail. So the AI is making that decision for us, we haven't got to worry about it. Which is good. It's what we want to do, we haven't now got to worry. Um, how can we now define where our ship goes? Well, we've got a couple of ways. If we go to the map, um, if I come out of build mode, if we are go to the map view, we can just simply set a target for our ship so that's our target there. If we will go over to this side instead, it will aim at that target instead. So that's, that's a simple way of doing it. You can um, also hold the shift button down. And this is in map mode where there's no um, items. You can create a path by holding shift and then just right clicking. Um, you can create a path for your uh, ship. But this is out of battle mode. This is when you are in... Um, map mode with no enemy so this is out of battle this will not be a, this would be available to you 
because we have a patrol card and uh, but it won't be available to you unless you have certain cards available the other side is the actual the patrol side and we can see we're making our way there if I go now into press N which is the CPU we see we, we can put, turn this into patrol mode now patrol mode if we zoom out a little bit so we get a little bit on the top now in patrol mode is very similar to um, the routing in map mode in that we can um, click on the map of various places and you can do this at quite a high level if you wish uh, so we're gonna try and get to that position there but you get an, a couple of extra options um, allows you to we can loop so on here if I press L on here you'll notice that whoops let me just redo that one again helps if I do it properly and I've clicked the first node and it's now looped so this is now set to do a loop so it will, f it will automatically go from the very first node to the last node I press by pressing that L button. If I wanted to move this node, I press the S, and then just click where I want it to, to be moved to, and that's moved that node. And obviously, if I wanted to, say, get rid of that one, let's get press the X, deletes it. And if I wanted to add a node, I press the B, and it will then go put one in between the, those two uh, particular nodes so it's a little bit uh, more advanced but for sailing this is very important and is available in combat so you can actually try and as a captain plan your course to try and get um, upwind or um, in a better more adv advantageous position on their rear etc so this is actually captaining your fleet because the AI itself is not going to be that um, intelligent with sailing ships so if we go back to our ship so because we are at the moment we're going upwind now I've got available to me a little item called path view now this is an option that you can you can purchase once you get points to spend experience points now the path view as you can see here is showing the path that the AI is trying to take uh, the path that it wants to go on at this moment now if I just change our route so I'm gonna just do this fairly simple by putting it back onto uh, fleet move and I will just change our position from where that is to over just a slightly more simpler route and I'm gonna do it due south so it's due south into the wind now you'll notice that because this is straight into the wind the ship is automatically putting done be putting in tax uh, that's the jagged side so that it doesn't isn't trying to go due into the wind uh, directly into the wind which is its slowest form um, now there was an option in the AI to allow what they call upwind pathing and it would remove this tacking and if we just go into there allow upwind pathing and you'll notice it just then has now gone straight which is slower and you know because the, the, this sail is in the worst possible configuration for this sail so this sail is although it is providing some force it's the worst possible force um, so I would normally disallow upward parving so that it actually does tack. This could also be handy if you are need to attack an enemy because this has got a better chance of bringing the guns to bear. But you can see we're actually going at a, a higher speed, 2.3, 2.4, although it is a little bit precarious in its um, parthing it's moving around a fair bit um, but while we're doing this we're going to look at one other section which is how could I smooth out this turning now sp 
you can see this wobble it's got that is it's, it's not really a problem with the AI the, the smaller your ship the worse this is and it's because the way the AI works is it keeps turning until it hits the correct position then it goes the opposite then it goes the opposite way and then it waits until it's a zero and then it goes the other way and so it's constantly over correcting which is fine because it's a simple way for the AI to work it that works in most cases if you want to smooth out your AI there is a couple of ways of doing it one is the further away and we're just just taken off the rudder which is obviously going to make it uh, not really work at this second. There's a couple of ways of doing it. The further away your rudder is from the center point of your ship, the more control it has, but also the more um, variance it gives on that control. So there we go. A little bit closer to the center. It's not rolling quite as fast. It must be isn't close enough to the center, actually. Let me see if I can put this very much near the center. There we go. You can see it's not... The downside is it's not turning quite as fast. It is putting a lot of roll on this ship, but it's not really correcting too much. Um, also, that might not be a good position because it's not central with the ship, with the ship's center point. So we would ideally want our rudder more, say, here to stop it um, pitching over. Now, when we turn, as we see the turn, you can see it's not rolling over when it turns. It's more flat turn, which is better for us in many ways. But we've now got this wobble. So how can we get past that wobble? Another way is to uh, reducing the force. If I go and look at the rudder, you see it's got an output scaled by one. Uh, I'm going to put some blocks in in top of this. If I just create a block, only a gap of only one behind it, you'll notice the output scale is now 0.125, and you can see that it's turning a lot slower, which stops the wobble. But overall reduces the turn rate of the ship but it's still staying flat but it is reducing it now what we can do is we can go out a little bit further and it's now at uh, 0.25 so that's a little bit more than it had but not too much and you can set this at a level which is appropriate to what you want to achieve with the vessel without sacrificing the fact that this needs to be center with your point of uh, center of your ship uh, but still in the water to allow it to turn properly the downside is it's not going to be very maneuverable um, going with the wobble means that if I want to do a big turn which I will do now by setting it over to there so I've now given it a quite a large turn you can see it's turning quite fast it's doing, doing that for turn at a reasonable rate and it's going straight there's no tacking because we're now going side onto the wind so um, anyway that is how you can reduce the wobble a little bit I was getting a bit confused as to which sail it could be. It could be used. Let's, let's go upwind. Let's get some speed on. Let's just see what what speed we can get on this. So if I go 45 degrees over there, and then we're going to come back, um, do a full turn, and then come back back this way. So you can see it's got both sails up. It's got a bit of wobble. If I want to reduce that wobble, get a block, put it one gap behind the rudder the wobble, wobble is reduced it's not eliminated but it is reduced slightly um, you could the only way to reduce it totally would be to use one of the more advanced lure blocks which um, I think is beyond most basic is, is certainly beyond these these tutorials okay so now final part is combat 
So how does it can it use the sails in combat? If I just give it a, I'm just going to put this in fleet move. Actually, I'm going to turn the AI off for the moment and put the sail down. I'm just going to set a target up, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we have now a little target behind us, over to um, our starboard side, um, in in to the rear. It is going to be uh, looking at that. It's going to be fairly much upwind of us once we turn around but we have to tack around and then go for that we're going to see how the parving goes so how the ai will try to move us around so i'm just going to simply put it onto combat mode and let the ai sort itself out so you can see the ai is quite simply turning us on a target it doesn't do anything more intelligent than try to get to the target at first because we're out of range because currently we are 500 meters from the target according to this it's just gonna try and get close because our AI was set to try and get to 90 meters from the target then it will go into its broadside uh, situation so we're just gonna let it hopefully go up there oh unfortunately it's it looks like it's slightly into the wind so okay if I wanted to, to improve this a little bit, what I could do is use the patrol mode instead. So I'm going to put it in patrol mode. And we're going to go over here, then into there. There we go. So I'm now manually setting our system up. So hopefully, and I can be ready to switch it over right, if I come down to our, our character I can keep an eye on where so we're effectively heading into the wind at this moment okay that's not good then so we decided okay I don't want to be heading into the wind let's head down downwind now so this is captaining your ship so we let's say we'll go straight for we'll get rid of that point and that point we'll go straight to here and we're gonna try and come around on this vessel up to there and then back on ourselves. so you can see how I'm using the patrol to basically guide our ship and let our ship now try and get us in range what's our range to the target now 300 meters so it's still 300 meters still a little bit far away but we're coming in at a much nicer angle we're coming in at a much better speed, 4.6, 4.8. And we can now decide, okay, enough of patrol. Let's put it onto combat. And it's now going slightly, still trying to go slightly upwind, but it is a little bit closer. So as you can see, using the AI and controlling ships with sail and simple weapons is a little bit more complex it's good fun you have to look at sailing uh, the ship rather than just simply letting it all do itself you have to build a good ship of course uh, but you do have to um, work a little bit harder as the player control just to control it just a little bit nicer now i can here i'm taking some manual control just to force it to go um slightly more upwind because i've decided okay i want to control this a little bit and just get us in range for shooting a little sooner and make sure it stays upwind of the target obviously if you've got another ship and there it is it's now firing the guns are in range. What's our actual range? 100 meters. It should now go into broadside. And I think it's, let's see where it's broadside. Oh, it's decided to go broadside. Oh, no, there it goes. It's turned into its 85 degree broadside now. So our guns are now firing. If it was an enemy ship, we would now be shooting at the enemy ship. So that's quite interesting. That's the way you control these. 
Now, a couple of other little bits, um, now we've done that, is you can um, have multiple sails next to each other. So I will just remove the target to stop the firing, and then we'll just look at how you can use multiple sails to get a little bit more speed. So we want to push the speed of our ship now on, say, the square sails. What we can do, if we go in here, and I'm going to put the mirror line on, if we duplicate some of these blocks sideways, and then we put again, uh, also the mast needs to go up as well. well let's just say we're not going to make it as big, but close to it. We've put a corner point in and we duplicate all the, most of the blocks, including the winch, which will go on the top. So there we go, we have now got two sails. If I now, I'll take control of this. So come out of build mode, and where's the wind? Where's the wind? Wind is over there, so let's go, let's go downwind. Uh, the wind is coming from that direction, so if I give it a turn this way, and I put both sails up, I'll actually do it with the uh, AI. I'll tell the AI that I want to go downwind, say to just um, put it into fleet mode. So just put it heading this way here, which is a, a fairly nice downwind, should be fairly downwind. Should be, oh no, no, the, the wind is to the south, so we need to go slightly north. There we go, that way. I didn't look at the weather vane myself, so there we go, we should be heading upwind now. We should see both sets of sails kick up, there we go. And if I go into build mode, you'll notice that there is a number of sets, there's multiple red lines now coming off of the sails. Because uh, both sets of sails are actually getting... Um, wind uh, that's not strictly you know it's not realistic but that is just in case someone asks you can stack the sails you can do the same here i could put for the, the triangular sails i could put another set of sails next to it to increase the speed obviously it takes up space um but it is possible to do that so uh anyway that is sailing um there is some other little sneaky things like putting sails horizontally to get lift so they actually become like a, a sail plane um don't i haven't really tried around with that much myself don't agree it's not really a it's a bit of an exploit of the physics but it, i'm sure some people use it i do know of previous previous bugs where ships were actually able to get into space using sails which is just wrong in some ways. Um, I can understand some of it. It'd be like flying a kite. You know, you're using the wind to take a vessel up. So I don't totally disagree with it. But uh, in this particular case, we're just looking at the sailing aspect um, for ships only. Hopefully this has been useful for you. For those of you who want a more simplistic um, adventure in From the Depths, uh, hopefully I would like to see some campaigns possibly in the future. Uh, it'd be lovely to see some where um, all the forces are more sail-based um, ships. It would be nice to see that. I think that would be a great option to have. Um, would put uh, great fun of just having these simple weapons and being able to have to take over sh enemy ships um, to gather the resources and uh, a very piratical uh, campaign would be good fun. So, until next time, please leave any comments below. i uh, will be doing some more tutorials soon, uh, possibly it's looking at aircraft um, after the, uh, uh, next on balancing aircraft and getting them flying. If there's anything else specific, please, uh, that you'd like to check that I am actually going to be a do doing a tutorial on, please leave a comment below. But otherwise, keep playing the game. Please keep 
um, building your vessels and coming up with new ideas. But above all, have fun. <laughs>